Hello there, how are you doing? How are you? I'm here tonight to talk to you about a couple of different things. One of the things is um, I thought it would be useful if I gave you some information about how to take care of yourself and how to use acupuncture energy and Chinese medicine energy in order to take care of yourself and to take care of your energy movement and flow. Our whole uh, body, our whole existence is made up of energy and it, our energy travels through our bodies in certain patterns. And the reason I do acupuncture and the reason I love Chinese medicine is because this whole idea that we were naturally designed to be able to be healthy. And so I want to help you find your highest health in your body and to help you with balancing yourself so that your natural ability to be healthy grows inside of you. So, um, and uh, doing um, self acupressure is one way to do that. And, uh, and so I'm gonna teach you tonight a couple of little self acupuncture things that you can do. And then it was also my intention tonight to talk about the difference between cleansing and detox. And so I'll start with the difference between cleansing and detox. Um, I've been posting a lot about uh, cleansing. This is the time of year that I recommend that people do some kind of a detox or some kind of a rebooting of your system. Um, most often because this is the time of the year for the liver, springtime is the time of the liver. Um, it's best to help support the liver the most. And a lot of quote unquote cleanses or detoxes are oriented towards helping the liver do its job better. So my annual detox, or I call it my seasonal reboot because it's really more about rebooting, is about providing the right nutrients for your liver to do its job. Again, your body is naturally designed to do all of the things that it needs to do. So it's naturally designed to be able to detoxify. It's naturally designed to heal. It's got an immune system that's naturally designed to help fight infections and fight off in foreign invasion. So we're always, our bodies are already designed to do certain things. And so what we want is to support them in doing what they would naturally already do and to help that work better. And sometimes when the system's not working well, certain things aren't working well. And so then, then you have to do extra to take care of that. But uh, if your body is basically healthy, then supporting it and doing what it needs to do is the best. So a detox is basically providing the correct nutrients to help your liver do its job and to help your other organs do the job that they're already doing. Um, when you get exposed to a lot of... Um, a lot of toxins and we all get exposed to a lot of toxins every day in our food in our environment in our laundry detergent you know depending on what you use in your homes there are chemicals pretty much everywhere and you've probably seen all those reports where people are tested um, these come out probably every year but where a person gets tested a person who maybe has a very clean lifestyle and gets tested to see how many chemicals are in their body and there are like over 700 chemicals in most people's bodies even if they're not exposing themselves on purpose to chemicals so we get exposed to lots of different chemicals and so when our system is constantly processing that, our, our system is also constantly processing hormones. Um, if we, even if we don't take hormones, we're processing our own natural hormones through the liver, processing uh, food, we're managing blood sugar through our digestive tract and the liver and insulin, and all of those things need support. So a detox has all of the nutrients in it that your body needs in order to support it in getting what it wants. Hi, you all. It's so great to see you. I see all your names. Ben, Candida, Chris, Atricia, and Jerry. It's so nice to see you all. Thank you for being here. I will keep on talking. 
And if you have questions, just post them in the comments here and I will get to them. Um, anyway, when you do a detox, you want the right nutrients. So a detox is not a fast. Um, and there is also fasting, which has a whole different set of benefits. So I should probably talk about the difference between fasting and detoxification. I'll do that in just a second. Um, and uh, so when you are detoxifying, you are eating plenty of vegetables, certain vegetables, there are all kinds of vegetables and vegetables support your body's natural ability to digest and they support the healthy bacteria in your guts and they support your liver in doing its job. And so vegetables, uh, in addition to whatever else you're doing for a detoxification are essential. And eating the, a, a good enough amount of food so that you have the nutrients in order to process toxins is also essential. So a, a detox is not a fast. It is uh, where you, you, you can do something like intermittent fasting, but, but fasting is where you don't put in very many nutrients in order to help uh, give the digestive system and the body a rest. So fasting is about resting your digestive tract, resting your pancreas, resting certain parts of your digestive system and your immune system in order for them to do some healing. So, uh, and fasting has been shown to be very effective in helping balance blood sugar and helping reset people's metabolisms and reset their metabolism. So it's entirely different than doing a detox because when you're doing a detox, you're taking in certain nutrients in order to support your body's ability to detoxify and clear out toxins from the body. When you're fasting, if you have a lot of toxins in your body, you might actually feel pretty crummy because, because your body will want to clear the toxins. And so you might begin to feel really crummy. And the idea is as much as possible, you don't want to feel crummy <laughs> whenever you're doing anything. So when you do a detox, there's a time where you might feel a little bit tired or a little bit, um, a little bit headachey or crummy, but you shouldn't feel terrible for days on end. And same with fasting. When you're fasting, if, if your body's loaded up with toxins, it's possible that you'll feel kind of crummy for some length of time. And so you want to, you want to mitigate that by doing things to help support again, to support your system as much as possible. So I'm also going to teach you a few little self acupressure things that you could do for yourself. And in this time when we're working, you know, when everybody's so concerned about their immune system, I'll teach you a couple of things for the liver and a couple of things for uh, calming your nervous system and uh, your immune system. So first of all, for your immune system, uh, right under your collarbone. So here's your collarbone right here and right under your collarbone. Um, so here's the big knot to where your collarbone is and you can press right here. This is a point called kidney 27 and so great to see you too, Candida. And, um, and this point, uh, can be a little bit tender, but it connects the lungs to the kidneys and the kidneys of course handle some detox as well. And it supports your, you being able to take a big, deep breath. So you can press here every day, and that will help your immune system. There's another point right here. So you follow the clavicle out. And uh, before it meets the shoulder, there's kind of another indentation right here. And you can press here. Let's see. Here's my hands. <laughs> Move this little shawl. So here's my hands and you can press in this indentation right under the clavicle. So you, so you follow the clavicle out to the end and there's an indentation at the end and the, that is lung one. That's the first point on the lung meridian. It might also be tender and you can press on there and that will support your immune system. It will help you take deeper breaths. It'll help support your lungs and their ability to be strong and your lungs in Chinese medicine, your lungs rule the ability to uh, protect yourself from things that come in from outside. They also, they start in the nose. So you actually, it, your nose, your physical 
throat, your physical lungs, your large intestine, and your skin, and your ability to protect yourself from things that come in from outside, which would be your immune system. So your lungs have a big job um, in Chinese medicine. And they also rule the emotion of grief. And so in these times when things are changing so rapidly, it's interesting that we're working with our immune systems, but also dealing with a lot of grief because a lot of people have lost so much. Some people have lost connection with others. Some people have lost loved ones. Some people have lost jobs. So there's a lot of loss right now and the lungs are dealing with that. So you wanna help your lungs every single day in some way or another, even if you're, so some people are taking supplements to help support immune system. You can also do acupressure. You can do a little bit of tapping on your um, chest where your lungs are, that will also help. See, uh, so if you tap your chest that, and take big deep breaths, that will help open up your lungs. Um, and your question about whether to press on both sides, it's okay to press on just one side um, because energy moves all over your body. So once the stimulus happens, it, uh, it's the same on both sides. Um, there's a lot of acupuncture that is just one-sided, so you don't have to press both sides, but pressing both sides is also good, so it depends. Um, whatever works right for you. There's another point right in the center, so there's a, a bone right here in the center called the sternum, right? And right in the center of the sternum is a point that's also good for your immune system, it's good for your heart, it's good for relaxing you, it helps your mood, and it's right in the center. It's usually kind of tender too. It also helps you take a big deep breath. So starting, this is this one. So one, two, three. You could just do those three points. You could give yourself like a, a little immune boost, a little breathing boost, okay? So that's for your immune system. And then for calming your nervous system, there are many, many, many things to do to calm your nervous system. So I'm going to show you my ears. <laughs> okay, so right here on the ear, there is a point that's called Shen Men, which is a point for calming the nervous system. And you can press, and you just need to do one ear. Um, your ear actually has a, a, a map of your whole entire body. And it... Um, um so this is your head this is your spine here and then and then these are your internal organs but here is a point right here that calms the nervous system so if you're having trouble with with anxiety or feeling really super stressed one of the best things that you can do is actually press on your ear and look for tender points um and any points that are tender are good to press on. You can just kind of massage it gently. So I have a point right here. This is where the neck is. And um, so I massage here quite often because it helps relax my neck. It might help relax the jaw. So you can massage in here. But, but the point for calming the nervous system specifically is right up in here. And if that's tender, just massage it, you know, and just kind of work that area. Um, yeah, they work right away, don't they? Yeah. Um, and you can uh, alternate ears. So one day you can massage this ear, and the next day you can massage this ear. And you just find tender points, um, or you can just work on this one point. And quite often when people come to my office, I'll put a little bead up in here for them to massage. Uh, you can just tape it. Uh, well, you can't tape a bead, but, um, but if you came into my office, I could tape a little bead here for you and it'll help calm your nervous system. It'll stay there for days. Um, so that is really good. And then there's another point up here that will calm your nervous system too. So you can just hold at the top of your head here and take some deep breaths. It's, it's really right inside the hairline, depending on where your hairline is, but like just a little half an inch inside the hairline, but also right at the top at the center of your forehead right here is a good calming point for your nervous system. So that's another point that you could do. So on your ear and the top of your head for your nervous system. And then uh, detox, so supporting your liver. Um, so uh, most of the liver points are on your legs, okay? 
So I'm going to do a little show and tell here of my legs. Um, so on the inside of the knee, right here, and so when you fold your knee like this, there's a knee a crease, right? And you want to go from the from the crease, and you kind of find a point right along the joint line where your finger fits real well, or your thumb fits real well. That's a, a good liver point. Okay, so that's a really good point to help the liver. Um, you can just massage that point. And then there's another point on the ankle. Um, so this is this bone right here. This is called the tibia. And right, like just above the ankle bone, you can kind of go from the, so that this is on the middle of your, the medial part of your leg, right? From the, so the inner ankle bone. And you go along this tibia bone at the back of it, you'll find a dent right there. That point is where the liver and the spleen and the kidneys meet. It's a great detox point, but also supports your digestion and your nervous system and uh, your elimination. So that's a great point. So those two points are for supporting your, um, supporting your detoxification. So you could uh, just do a little acupressure on those points. Um, and then I'll just give you one other point that's really easy to do. Um, this point right here, right here, between your thumb and your first finger, um, there's a, in the web here between, there's a, there's a spot that will be tender. And this point is called, is a large intestine point. So it also helps elimination and it helps support, uh, your uh, uh, sorry it also helps you I'm gonna answer you in a second Canada it also helps elimination but it helps headaches it kind of this whole area here so if you're having trouble with allergies this whole area of your face the front of your face this point will help with that so like if you have a headache on the front of your forehead you have a stuffy nose this opens up your stuffy nose It'll help with allergies and elimination. This is a great point to massage if you have things in the front of your face there. So if the knee one, if any point is really tender, it just means that it wants some attention. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that your liver is inflamed. So in Chinese medicine, so when an organ is out of balance in Chinese medicine versus how we look at Western medicine, it's not necessarily the same exact thing. So if... Uh, if your liver is out of balance, so you're, in Chinese medicine, the liver regulates the smooth flow of energy in your whole body, and it regulates the emotion of anger, it regulates women's menstrual cycles. It also regulates the ligaments and tendons, so it does a lot of different things besides handling detoxification. And balance is different than, than Western medicine. So when we talk about balance, it's, a, it's about getting your body's energy in balance and so even if in chinese medicine you had some imbalance in your liver it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a physical problem with your liver according to western medicine okay so don't worry about that but uh if you're feeling really super stressed so in chinese medicine the liver also deals with stress so if you've been feeling really stressed um or you've you know, been worrying about things a lot or trying to get a lot of things done because its job is to get things done, then you may find that your liver is, is more out of balance than it would otherwise be. So you might have stiff muscles in your neck and shoulders. That's a, a sign of liver imbalance. Um, or your eyes might be burning. That's another sign of liver imbalance. Um, or if a point around your knee is sore, there's a lot of points around the knee that are often sore because um, there's also spleen points around the knee. So that might be sore. But definitely massaging a point that's sore is helpful because it'll help shift the energy. And try not to approach anything with try to approach whatever you're doing to heal yourself from a perspective of love. So 
be loving towards your body and don't let it freak you out. So if you're massaging here, just kind of put love into it. You know, oh, I'm helping my immune system. I'm doing good things for my immune system. Or I'm calming my nervous system. And I'm doing this because I love myself. I love my body. I care about it. And I want to do good things for myself. So you want to put good thoughts into your body. You want to give good love to your body so that it takes care of you. Because if you take care of it, it will take care of you. It's kind of a two-way street. Does that make sense, Canada? Um, so, uh, okay. Hi, Rena. Nice to see you. Um, so if, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask me. I'm going to talk just for another couple minutes. And I'm going to give you the link to my seasonal reboot. Um, I've lowered the price this year. Uh, normally it's $247, and this year it's $197. And it includes everything you need to do a detox for two weeks. So it's a two-week detox. It provides you with two, um, two shakes a day and two packets of supplements. And during these times, it's really a lot harder for people to eat differently. I know because we're, we're stuck at home and there's a lot of different things going on and there's a lot of stress. So you can kind of eat normally. And usually with the seasonal reboot, what you're doing is you don't eat anything Basically, you eat lean organic meat um, and vegetables, lots and lots and lots of vegetables. So if you're going to do a detox, or even if you don't do this one, um, you want to eat 80 to 90% vegetables and then some small amounts you know, of protein and good fats. You want to focus on good fats. And then, you know, like I said, in these times, it might be harder to follow a more strict diet. So even if you just did those things, you took the two shakes a day and you took the supplements and then you ate however else you want, it will still help you because it's helping support your body's natural ability to detoxify. So that's how you want to think about it. <clears throat> Nice to see you too, Michael. Yay. And, uh, okay, so you're asking about scalp irritation. Um, if, it, if your skin is irritated, and again, it kind of depends on where, but your skin is always connected to your digestion. So to your large intestine, skin, lungs, and large intestine are connected in Chinese medicine. And, uh, and even in Western science, you know, a lot of people have uh, skin issues. We usually find the root cause within their digestive tract, within the large intestine. So I often, when people have chronic skin issues, I have, I have them do a stool test so that I can look and see what's going on with the digestive system. And then healing the digestive system will help heal the skin. And it, like 95% of the time that's connected. And uh, Chris, I don't know if it's an itchy irritation, but, but usually if your skin is itching, there's some, uh, <clears throat> either it's dry. So there are other reasons that your skin could be bothering you, but um, so it could be dry skin. It could be a shampoo that you're reacting to or a chemical that you're reacting to on your scalp. Or uh, like my scalp, uh, reacts to certain hair products um so they'll make my skin itch on my scalp so there could be that kind of thing but if you have a chronic skin issue or a rash or your skin in in various places on your body is itching or irritated then i always look to the digestive tract to see what's going on there and support the digestive system in getting healthier What's confusing you, Chris? Tell me what's confusing you, and I'll try to explain it. <clears throat> okay, question about how much water. So in Chinese medicine, how much water you should drink is based on whether you're thirsty. Um, in uh, a lot of uh, modern functional medicine, a lot of you know health food advocates, a lot of advocates of certain kinds of health say you should drink 
eight glasses of water a day, but in Chinese medicine, we talk about getting enough water. So the question really is, when are you thirsty? And can you tell when you're thirsty? So that's part of learning to listen to your body. And you're right, Chris, it's kind of confusing when, um, when you don't know exactly how much water you should drink. But if you really tune in to when you're thirsty or to what's going on with your body, then you can start to tell when you're thirsty or when your body wants more of something. And learning to distinguish those messages is part of learning to listen to your body. So, Okay, well, um, I'm going to sign off in just a minute. So if you have any last minute questions, I'm happy to answer them. And otherwise, thank you so much for being here. It's been delightful to see you guys even in this way. And I will look forward to seeing you again um, next Wednesday at 4 p.m. our time. I will be on a show with my friends, uh, Kellyanne, Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci and Dr. Anna Kabeca and Dr. Tammy Moralia. And I think there's one other person. And we're going to be talking about hormones and the effect of the stresses that we're going through on our hormones. And it's called Doctor's Night Out. I sent out a link through the um, through uh, Dr. Kronos, my through you through all of our system. But they'll also it'll also be here um, on Facebook. Okay, so I'll look forward to seeing you again soon, and I hope you're doing great. And I'll talk to you again. Let's see if you have other questions. Thank you all. It's great to see you. Okay, take care. Bye bye.